When the screen on my Elegoo Saturn 8K finally gave out on me after two years of faithful service, I went to the Elegoo website to replace it, only to find that the Saturn 4 Ultra was currently on sale. I've been wanting to replace my Mars Pro for quite some time because the plate size is really small and the printing speed is pretty slow compared to my new printer. So I thought, really, this is a great time to do it. So this is the Elegoo 4K Ultra. On top of the large build plate size, it has a ton of super cool features, including self-leveling, overflow detection, a camera that can help you catch and stop misprints, a drip tray, and honestly, just all kinds of great stuff. Like all of my Elegoo machines, setup was pretty easy. The most difficult thing was getting the new Chidu Box slicing software open and getting it to work with the printer so that I could send print files through the network and not have to use the USB. Honestly, this is super underrated. There is nothing worse than accidentally getting resin on a USB and messing it up and having to replace them and it's a sticky mess and it sucks. Okay, like I said, it's not just the printer that's new though. Resion has sent me three bottles of their brand new resin, which is specifically formulated for ball jointed dolls. The way I am so excited about this, I've gotten Resion resin before, as well as Zhao Jin, which is the same manufacturer if I'm not mistaken. If you remember, on my review of Zhao Jin resin, it did end up being my new favorite resin. But I am totally open to that first place spot being taken by this new BJD specific resin. First off, I really like the fun new packaging. It's low-key, so much more fun to open, and also I think that these boxes could be easily repurposed. All three bottles that were sent to me were in the cream pink color, which I believe is the closest to most quote-unquote normal BJD skin tones on the market. In Chidu Box, I had to create a profile for the specific resin after finding all the specifications on Resion's website. Okay, for the color. I really love the color of this. It's very much true to the more standard pink fleshy tones of ball jointed dolls rather than other 3D print resins that are more orangey based. Another note is this resin is really thick. I would say maybe 20% thicker than other resins I use. After successfully printing the Elegoo Tower to make sure that everything is set up properly, let's get to the first print. So what was on the plate? Only samples for the brand new Teeny Tiny's release. We're printing Lyric and Melody, as well as a couple extra Teeny Tiny heads for some bodies I have floating around just to see how the colors matched. As a heads up, Lyric, Melody, Kig Sheep, Kig Bunny, and Nyx will all be available for a limited pre-order February 10th to 24th, 2025. I have to keep reminding myself that that's the year now. They will be available in Peach, pink, and a really pretty minty green. You can get your doll as a kit, a blank assembled doll, or add in fun extras like face-ups or extra parts. The link to my website's in the description, but for now, let's get back to printing. First impressions, straight out of the alcohol wash, is that this looks great. I'm not seeing visible print lines, and it feels really hard and solid. Some resins come out of the alcohol and feel kind of soft, and I'm a bit afraid to scratch them or handle them too much, but this one feels really sturdy. I'm videoing you to prove that you won't stop working. I'm free labor this week. Great. That's how I get my meals here. Oh my god, your doll is judging you. I'm gonna go get you some banana bread in a second. So I'm going to compare this resin to two other resins I use on a regular basis. The first comparison is to the Elegoo ABS leg. I used the white as a base and I made this baby pink color. Coming out of the alcohol wash, you can see that the print lines are more noticeable and the resin is definitely softer and more fragile. The second comparison is to Anycubic Standard White, which is my other go-to resin of choice. I tinted it this light minty green. Coming out of the alcohol wash, this was firmer than the ABS-like, but softer than the Resion. Here's what they look like after curing. And to be 100% fair, I did run a batch of Resion with tints mixed in as well, just to make sure that the tints were not affecting the quality of the print and giving the Resion an unfair advantage. However, even though I mixed the same amount of drops per 100 milliliters, 
The thickness of the Resion made it so that like no color change happened. I think I might have to switch to a powder pigment for this resin. Regardless, the prints with the color drops in them, which was only a shade or two darker than the original color after all that tint, did not seem to really have any print issues and it did not affect how the layers and hardness of the resin were. Also, I have to say that the supports came off the Resion in the Anycubic prints equally as easy, but I had to be extra gentle with the ABS like because as I mentioned, it was softer coming out of the alcohol wash and the hot water. I'll tell you right now that so far my favorite is the Resion BJD resin, followed by Anycubic Standard and trailing behind is the Elegoo ABS like, which like really surprised me because typically I love the ABS like, but again, I've never directly compared it to my other favorite resins. Okay, we're out of the curing machine and into post-processing. Let's see how all three of these resins sand. I'm starting out with a Dremel and a buffing tip. Now, I know it's just a buffing tip, but even on low, these big Dremels can cause a lot of damage to resin. So you have to be super light-handed. If you're new to using a Dremel with your 3D prints, I recommend using the ones like Nail Techs use that are battery operated and not nearly as powerful. But I have to say, the Resion took it like a champ. The only spots I really needed the Dremel were where their supports were, and the forehead of the doll, which tends to get these sort of like circle layer lines, no matter what kind of resin I use. This is my sacrifice for laying the faceplate in such a way that there are no supports in the face at all. Another thing I noticed about sanding the Resion is it didn't kick up very much dust, which is really nice when you are in an indoor workspace. Next up, we have the pink Elegoo ABS-like, which as I mentioned is softer, and I had to sand way more because of the layer lines. And on top of this, this was by far the dustiest of all three, and it made a huge mess and pretty much covered my glasses. This is why you wear a respirator, or at the very least, a dust mask when sanding. Finally, the Anycubic resin sat kind of in the middle. It didn't kick up a lot of dust like the Elegoo did, and there weren't as many layer lines to sand. But I will say the support marks were more prominent in this resin than in the other two. After using the Dremel, everything got a quick wet sand with a medium grit sanding sponge, a fine grit sanding sponge, and finished off with a melamine sponge, aka the magic eraser. With the dolls all strung, it's time to take product photos. While I'm doing that, I'd like to break down my final thoughts for you. But if you're interested in seeing some behind the scenes doll photography stuff, check out this video on my second channel, Teenier Tinkers. Okay, in the end, I think all three resins looked really great. The end product to the customer doesn't seem to vary very much though. However, I think the biggest difference in these resins comes down to just a couple things. First off, post-processing time. The Resion resin having almost no layer lines really cuts down on the amount of time I need to remove the supports and to sand each piece. And hardness. The Resion is definitely the hardest of the three resins, though if I was going to score this a 10 out of 10 for resin toughness and scratch resistance, I would give the Anycubic about an 8 or an 8.5. Now I would give the Elegoo ABS like maybe a 6 or so. There are a couple drawbacks to the Resion as much as I love it. First off, it's not globally available, and from Canada, if I order it from the website, the shipping really adds on to the cost. The price is also considerably higher than the other two resins. I'm also a little bit worried about how I'd be able to color this resin to fantasy colors, as the tints I used for every other resin did virtually nothing to it. But that's it for now. Please don't forget to check out but that's it for now. Please don't forget to check out the Teeny Tiny's pre-order starting on February 10th if you're into that. But for now, if you're already subscribed, thanks so much for subscribing. And if you're new here, I hope you like the content and consider subscribing. As always, I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.